exalt his name let's exalt his name we exalt your name Jesus we exalt your name Jesus oh come on the Bible says in the last days he will pour out his spirit upon all people do we have any all people in the room here tonight he says your sons and your daughters will prophesy do we have anybody who's ready to prophesy to this generation in the room tonight Upon the young and the old, they'll see visions and dreams. He'll pour out his spirit upon men and women and children. Our prayer tonight is that God would awaken us. He would awaken our hearts to the reality of who he is. He would awaken our hearts to the move of his Holy Spirit for such a time as this. I want you to know you have been called for such a time as this. And it's time for us as a church family to arise from our slumber to the reality of who he is, how good he is, how wonderful he is. And tonight is a night where we welcome his spirit with all that we are. And so if you are in agreement with that tonight, would you raise your hands to heaven as we pray? Oh, Heavenly Father, we're here tonight for you. You've said that you would pour out your spirit upon all flesh. And God, we say, let it be so of us. Pour out your spirit upon every son. Pour out your spirit upon every daughter. Let there be prophecy and visions and dreams of what you would have for our generation. That the harvest is white and you are sending us forth. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you would awaken us to you in Jesus' name. And if you believe that in this place tonight, let's give him a shout of praise. A shout of praise. Come on.
to just sing songs but we came to lift you up to the center of the room where you belong and give you praise give you honor give you all of our worship all of our attention Jesus Jesus tonight we came for a fresh encounter with you not only will we just not be quiet but we can't help but sing your praise to sing who you are the truth about who you are in the midst of our lives We remind ourselves of your goodness, of your faithfulness, of who you are, Jesus.
sing that again. And worthy you were, and worthy you are, worthy you will be forever, Yahweh. Worthy you were, worthy you are, and worthy you will be so deserved. Driving in his presence. Oh, we breathe you in tonight. You're so near. Oh, we turn our hearts to you.
so strongly but that's for you that he says he would pour out his spirit on all flesh that means you but he's doing a new thing in you in your mind and in your spirit in your heart in your marriage in your life he's doing a new thing right here in that there's no such thing as too far gone from his presence from his touch from his hand so as we continue to sing this last song I just feel like something's gonna break And if you don't have faith for it, that's okay. We have faith for you. That our God is good, our God is faithful, and he's pouring out his spirit over the next three days in a way that we've never seen before. So Jesus, we trust you. We trust that you are more than able to do anything that we could possibly imagine. That you are the good shepherd and you lead us. That you hold us even when we feel too far. You hold us. You bring us back to your heart. I start to forget all of the great things you did. When did I throw away faith for the impossible? And how did I start to believe that you weren't sufficient for? Why do I talk myself out of seeing miracles when I know that you are more than able? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And you are more than able. I know because I've seen it. You are more than able, no matter 
the situation you are And you are more than able Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? There's nothing too hard for you, Lord Now I see all that I have And I've got my confidence back Come on, church And I put my trust in the one who still does me What a, what a Jesus meeting. Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise. Tonight, we have come expecting the impossible to happen. We are coming, not looking at every circumstance and situation. But tonight, we have eyes of faith and we see, we see what God sees in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and declare this. I declare, I declare tonight, tonight I am living by faith. I am seeing the impossible. I am not defeated. I am seated with Christ in the heavenly places. So I will rejoice and I will say hallelujah. Come on, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. Awaken us. Hey, you guys look good in the 
dark or light. Uh, so uh, why don't you take a moment and before you're seated, uh, well, you can all get your seats, you in the front here, uh, plenty of room. Uh, greet four or five friends and say, hey, what's up? We are so excited to talk about the God Encounter today. This is number 80 for us here at Church in the Sun, and I'm excited for you to hear some of the testimonies and the stories of people's lives transformed and changed here at the God Encounter. The God Encounter gave me a community. God Encounter helped me walk in spiritual boldness. The God Encounter helped me live a bold and confident life. At the God Encounter, I experienced His presence in a new way. The God Encounter helps me spend time with Jesus and see how much He loves me. The God Encounter is where I made new friends. At the God Encounter, I found purpose. The God Encounter is life-changing. The God Encounter helped me change my life. The God Encounter is where God healed my inner heart. The God Encounter helped me to overcome grief. At the God Encounter, I found healing. At the God Encounter, I learned to forgive myself. The God Encounter taught me how to be more intentional with my walk with Christ. The God Encounter helped me start my relationship with Jesus. It's hard to believe it's been 20 years since the very first God Encounter. For me, it changed my life. I finally got to forgive myself after all these years. Hey, you know what? For you, it's time. Praise God. I was coming back from Korea and I heard about a great revival in Bogota, Colombia. And Judy and I went to uh, Bogota and we heard about these God encounters. The church was about 300,000. And we came back and I went to an encounter, Judy went to an encounter. And so we started God Encounters in our church. Uh, we've taken 20,000 people. Uh, a lot of our limitations are just we're in bondage and we need to be set free. So we're doing these two God Encounters coming up and uh, you can register after the meeting tonight and they are absolutely awesome and God will do incredible things. Uh, has anyone here been to a God Encounter? Would you raise your hand? Two or three? Okay. I want to welcome all of you that are guests tonight, and we're delighted that you're here. Uh, maybe you're looking for a church or just Jesus, whatever it is. If you're a guest tonight, throw up your hand. Would you guess? That we, look at all these guests. Whoa. So just, you see the uh, screen up here, just uh, text guest and give us your information. We'll be in touch with you. Uh, but we're delighted that you're here at this Awaken meeting and I hope God's going to touch you. Take a moment right now and you can, there's a, anyway, it's there. <clears throat> uh, amen. Well, God is good. We are blessed, we are blessed, we are blessed. Uh, we uh, want to take a moment and to um, have an opportunity to give to the Lord tonight. Uh, how many know it's more blessed to give than to receive? Uh, we were trying to 
decide on this conference, what do we do? And of course, you always sell tickets. And, and so, but we decided we'll trust God. And there's a big budget, but we're going to trust God. So would you think about giving tonight? Everyone do something. Thank you for your excitement tonight. Whoa. Wow. Uh, you can give by cash or check or Bitcoin or whatever you want to give tonight. Uh, you can go online, churchinthesun.com, or you can give by texting 45777. Put in the amount, space, C-I-T-S. But uh, give tonight uh, for this ministry that we can uh, take care of everything. And boy, there's a presence of God here tonight. Whoa, Jesus is here. So right now, take a moment. Take a moment to uh, just give as uh, you've been blessed. And we want tonight to meet every need that we have. And thank you for giving. Thank you for being faithful. Uh, by the way, we have hundreds watching online. We welcome you tonight too. You can give right where you are. And uh, before we pray over the offering, uh, just want to mention that we have an incredible young adult ministry that is all fired up in our church next gen pastor pj roxy and the first tuesday night of every month it'll be november the 7th our young adults meet together right here on our campus uh 18 to 25 it's really fabulous amen, amen. so uh Let's just, uh, let's just pray right now and over the offering as you give. Our Father, we thank you tonight for your faithfulness. We thank you that you are more than enough. And Jesus, we give tonight for the kingdom of God. We give that souls will be saved, healed, and delivered. So bless every person as they give, we pray. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, yes. Smile as you text give. Well, tonight we are honored to have evangelist Nathan Morris with us. He's, uh, he's got quite a story. He ran from God for a long while. And finally, in 2002, he invited Christ into his life started to preach in his dad's church, sharing Christ in England, England. Then he went throughout the UK. In 2006, he started Shake the Nations, 
started off to Africa, India. 2010, he was a part of igniting the Bay Revival with John Kilpatrick. And now he's in the nations of the world, the nations of the world. I talked to him the other day, he said, every two weeks I'm in Nicaragua. I said, really? I just got back a couple days from Spain at a big meeting there. I love to be around people who have the anointing and they really are passionate about Jesus. Oh, I did mention he's married. And uh, Rachel, his wife, I think she came to the meeting. Are you here, Rachel? Stand up, Rachel. And your mom. So before he comes, watch this. Jesus is asking you this question. Jesus te está haciendo esta pregunta. Who do you say that he is? ¿Quién dices tú que es Jesús? I tell you in Jesus name. Behold the lamb of God, the one who shall return to receive his own. Are you ready to meet your maker? This is the power of the cross. That God says, I gave my only son. His blood will set you free. But in exchange, I must have your whole heart. What is happening? Evangelist Nathan, this is the young boy you prayed for right in the front. He's not been able to hear since birth. Me dijeron que él no escucha bien. Doctor told me that he couldn't hear. Dice, Mama, he just, he muy just bien. said right now, Mom, I can hear now. Somebody say hallelujah. I had paralysis on the right side. I couldn't move. I couldn't even walk. So. You checked yourself out of the hospital. Why did you do that? Because if I go, I'm having faith that God is going to heal me and He's going to perform a miracle. So you came to the crusade and what happened? You said, there's somebody here, there's a woman with paralysis on the right side of your body. So she said that she put her hands on her right side of their body she felt the power of god go through her i couldn't believe that i was healed the lord had healed me you show the people what jesus has done for you go 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 do it again miracles are happening say amen what is happening evangelist nathan samuel was with us in esteli he had a brain tumor caused him to lose his sight made it very difficult to hear and he wasn't able to walk so you could not walk properly i couldn't even put my foot on the ground we took him carrying to the crusade and you put your hands upon his head he says i cursed that tumor and from that day moment he went walking from that he started to play the battery again. He started to play the drums. What a mighty God we serve. Save me! Give me the fuck In December, she had ovarian cancer surgery. You had cancer. Then you had cancer. I had cancer in my ovaries. I was in the hospital. As I came to the crusade, they made a prayer for me. The pain disappeared completely and God healed me. The doctor said, I only had three days of life. Jesus has completely healed me. The glory of God is all over you. What has Jesus done for your mother? They pray for the prayer team, pray for her. The wound that has been opened since December is healed completely. 
he had a sickness in his bone and in his hips. Could only walk straight with that boot. Jesus is huge. Jesus te sanó. Can you show me what Jesus has done? Can you walk? Puedes caminar. Go, go, go. Can you see this? We serve a miracle working God. Servimos al Dios de milagros. Choose this day who you will serve. You are not promised tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. If you die tonight, si mueres esta noche, where would you spend the turn on the pasaría en eternidad? Jesus is waiting for you right Jesus now. Jesus te está esperando en este momento. Come right now. Come on to Jesus. Ven a Jesús. Come to Jesus. Ven a Jesús. Say, Lord Jesus, Señor Jesús, wash me. In your precious blood, in tu preciosa sangre, I repent of my sin. Me arrepiento de mis pecados. I receive eternal life. Recibo vida eterna. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is coming. Would you stand, stand, and let's welcome. Evangelist Nathan Morris. I got you. Come on and give Jesus a mighty shout of praise. Why don't you lift your hands all over this place right now? Church, I want you to lift your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost all over this place. Just begin to lift up your voice. Come on, let's join with heaven right now. Let's join with heaven right now. I want you to pray out loud. Come on. I don't hear you. You shout louder at football games. You shout louder at college football games. Come on. Lift your voice all over this place. I want you to cry, Lord, awaken me. Awaken my heart. Fill me tonight. Lord, fill my life tonight with your glory. Spirit of the living God, you are welcome here. Come and do whatever you want to do. Father, we declare, Lord, to those that are watching by way of internet, that, Lord, the same spirit, the same anointing, the same power is filling every home, every life tonight. Lord, I declare in this place that we are standing on holy ground and where your spirit is, there is liberty. So come and breathe on us, Lord. We need you now more than ever before. Lord, your word declares that without you, we can do nothing. We need you, Lord. We need you, we need you, we need you. America needs you. The White House needs you. Father, our schools need you. This generation needs you. The nations are crying out for you, Lord. The world is crying out for the sons of God to be revealed. Father, we know, we hear that you are coming close. That, Lord, you will return as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But we're asking, Lord, that you would give us a window of time. That there would be a mighty harvest of souls the Lord your word declares that you wish that none should perish so father we're asking tonight let the fire of your spirit burn on the altar of our hearts come and do what only you can do Lord come and breathe again speak again move again heal again save again deliver again Father, I pray that you would birth a cry in our generation. Lord, we cry out, come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. Are you hungry tonight, church? Are you hungry tonight? I don't hear you, brother. Let's play. Let's play. Can you turn him up? I can't hear him. Come on, just lift up your voices. You know, I thank God that I've come to church in the sun. What an incredible church. But I pray that you've not just come to see a preacher tonight. 
Come on, fix your eyes on Jesus. Lift your hands to Jesus. Put your eyes on Him. Now open up your mouth, open up your voice. Come on, just tell Him, tell Him, Lord, you're worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. Lord, your word declares that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that God will raise up a standard against him. I pray that your church would not be silent right now. I pray that your church would be the standard, that your church would be the light, that your church would be the voice, that Lord, you would use your church in this hour to save a generation, Lord. That is the cry of our hearts. America shall be saved. The nations will see an outpouring of your glory. In Jesus' name. So Lord, tonight bless your word. And Lord, we open up this conference. Awaken us. Awaken us. May we know you like never before. In Jesus' name, the people of God shouted, Amen. Oh, you can do better than that. Give God a mighty shout. A mighty shout. Glory be to God. I don't know about you. I don't care that it's a Wednesday night. This is going to be a night of His glory. Can you say Amen? Before you're seated, why don't you just touch two people and say, get ready, God is in the house. It is so awesome to be at Church in the Sun. Could you just turn me down on the monitors just a little bit? I got a bit of echo going on. Thank you. It is so awesome to be at Church in the Sun. It really is my honor to be here. I know Pastor Alex has already introduced my wife, Rachel, but I'm gonna introduce her again. Can you say hi to my wife, Rachel? Would you say hi to the people? I, I did say to Pastor Alex, I said, I must be on my best behavior tonight because my mother-in-law is here. And whenever the mother-in-law is here, we have to be on our best behavior. But would you give a church in the sun welcome to Teresa Castleman? I know my father-in-law is watching as well. It's so awesome to look around the room and see some friendly faces. I can't mention all of you, but I do have two special guests tonight. I want you to welcome evangelist Jean-Luc Traxel from Switzerland, an incredible man of God. Would you stand and greet everyone? Stand up. Say hi. Jean-Luc Traxel is being used mightily throughout Europe. God is using him. Stadiums are being filled. You know, Europe was known as the continent of darkness, but God is moving mightily in Europe. Europe shall be saved. Can you say amen? It is my honor to work with him. He is a co-chair with myself for the Global Evangelist Alliance. And let me tell you what God is planning. God is bringing evangelists from all over the world. And we're strategizing how to take whole nations for God. God is on the move. Can you say amen? amen. I also want you to welcome another dear friend of mine, evangelist Chris Mickelson. Would you stand up and say hi? Chris is local just as I am, but God is using him throughout Pakistan. You want to check it out. It's amazing what God is doing in these meetings. I'm so excited about tonight. I have a word burning in my heart, but I can't go any further without acknowledging Pastors Alex and Judith Cladenberg. Can we thank God for, for their lives? Their faithful service to the Lord in this region is why God is moving in Orlando, Florida. I thank God for you, I honor you for your faithfulness. Do you know, I don't know whether Pastor Alex would mind me saying this, but Pastor Alex will call me 
I always know I pick up the phone and he said, listen, I'm just calling to say I love you. He encourages me. He champions me. He doesn't need to do it, but that is the heart of a father. And I thank God for men of God that will champion the next generation. You know, he called me and he said, listen, when are we next having dinner? It's not going to be every 10 years. Pastor Alex drove up to our headquarters just to have lunch and say hello. So once again, I want you to thank God for the life of Pastor and Judith, Alex Kladenberg. <laughs> Pastor Alex just mentioned that in the month of February, I was invited to go to the nation of Nicaragua. I was filming one of our television programs and I'd invited a missionary and he came to film in our studio. But as we were filming, the glory of God came into that studio. Right in the middle of the interview, I began to weep in the presence of God. It was unusual. But as I was talking about the things of God with this missionary, they, they send missionaries into the remote parts of the earth. If you go through their training program, this is called Mountain Gateway, but they take you into the wilderness for three weeks with nothing but a backpack and some water and you've got to survive. This is real, real missions. And we came out of the interview and I said, what do you think was going on in there? I felt the glory of God. And I'll never forget, he looked at me and said, well, I've not really come for your program. He said, I've come to ask you a question. I said, what is the question? He said, do you believe that God can shake a whole nation? And I looked at him and I, I sort of smiled. I said, well, God gave me the ministry, shake the nations. Yes, I believe it. But he looked at me with those piercing eyes and he said, no, I'm going to ask you again. Do you believe God can shake a whole nation? And then I knew it wasn't him asking me the question. It was the Lord. I said, yes, Lord, I believe it. He said, the government has opened the door for you to come and hold gospel crusades throughout the whole nation. Now, if you know the history of Nicaragua, I have to be very careful, but if you know the history of Nicaragua, you'll know what I'm about to tell you is impossible. But he had, the government, the president, his wife had given us access to preach the gospel to the whole nation. It was going to take millions of dollars, of which I didn't have. And as every preacher does, we say, well, I'll pray about it. I remember that next Friday, I was preaching at Oral Roberts University in their chapel service. And as I came out of the service, God had just moved really powerfully. And they were about to take us to lunch before we got on the plane and flew home. And as I was in the restaurant, the Holy Spirit just struck my heart. And he reminded me of when the king came to the prophet and he said, what about the Israel? What about the armies of Israel? And the prophet said, I want you to take the arrows and strike the ground. And the king, he takes, he takes the arrows and he strikes the ground three times. And the prophet said, if you would have struck six times, you would have had a total victory. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, don't miss this moment. Strike the ground. So I said to my team, I said, listen, we're in. Some of my staff said to me, do you, do you realize like your itinerary? We've got crusades around the world. How are we going to do this? I said, I don't know, but we got to strike the ground. We can't miss this moment. We didn't have the money. But within no time, there was a businessman that came and said, I'm going to pay for the whole thing. Millions of dollars in order to see Nicaragua shaken. You ought to shout amen right there. <laughs> so in the month of February, in the month of February, we began to hold gospel campaigns in Nicaragua. They started in the most remote part of the nation. 
on that first night I realized that this wasn't just a normal gospel campaign that something sovereign was happening that night they recorded the largest gathering in that place in Nicaragua in their history multitudes were gathering I've been going from the end of February the beginning of March all the way up sometimes every two weeks Whatever city we go to, whatever place we go to, there are multitudes that are gathering. Thousands are gathering in the streets. We're having to put screens out on the streets. I'm about to go in about a week's time, two weeks time. We're expecting over a quarter of a million, 300,000 to be in that next meeting. God is shaking the nation of Nicaragua. A place that has been closed is now open and God is pouring out His Spirit. Can you shout Amen. I'm about to show you just a minute video. I just asked the guys to put some clips together just so you can get a feel of what God is doing in that nation. But I'm not showing it to entertain you. I'm showing it because the Bible promises that there will come a time when the reaper will overtake the sower that there will come an acceleration in the harvest there will come an acceleration in the move of God as as we know that the Lord is so close to returning there will come a move of God that will be so supernatural that multitudes will be swept into the kingdom of God you might be getting your news from CNN but my my news is coming from heaven and God is going to pour out his spirit and the darker it gets the greater the light is going to shine can you shout amen so I want you to watch this video and I want you to say, Lord, set my heart ablaze. Use me, use my life for such a time as this. Watch this. When the blood of Jesus is over your life, porque cuando la sangre de Cristo está sobre tu vida, the devil cannot enter. El diablo no puede entrar. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And my Bible tells me, y mi Biblia me dice, greater is He, mayor es, who lives in me, el que mora en mí, than He who is in the world. En el mundo. There is only one name given under heaven by which men shall be saved. You want to know that name? His name is Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Lord Jesus, Señor Jesús, I believe. Yo creo. You are the Christ. Que tú eres el Cristo, the Son of God, el Hijo de Dios. I give you my heart. Te entrego mi corazón. I give you my life. Te entrego mi vida. Wash me in your precious blood. Limpia me en tu preciosa sangre. Jesus a mighty shout of praise we will be going there while the end of the year like I said I'm about to go into Managua where we're expecting over a quarter of a million to be in that service we will have finished the e the, the east side uh, the west side sorry of the nation Coming into next year, the first part of next year, we're going to cover the whole west side. By the end of it, the entire nation of Nicaragua will have heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can you shout amen? Can you shout amen? We're about to go into the nation of El Salvador. We're joining with the Global Evangelist Alliance. We're about to hold mass gospel campaigns throughout the whole nation. The president has given us access again. He said, how can I help? The nations are crying out for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's time to reap a harvest. But what I'm seeing is it is time for unity like never before. This is not about one preacher and one ministry. It's about every one of us joining together in one accord with one heart. And out of that, God will move in such power. Power. I tell you, he's about to blow our minds. Can you say amen? 
I have a word burning on my heart. Are you ready? Three of you. Amazing. I have a word. Are you ready? Praise God. I want you to turn with your Bibles, please, to the book of Romans. The book of Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. And verse 11. Say amen when you have it. This is what the word of God declares. It says, and do this, knowing the time that now, everyone say now, it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. I want to read verse 11 again. And do this, knowing the time that now, everyone say now, it is high time to awake out of sleep. To awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. When I heard the title of this conference, my heart began to burn. Because if there's ever a fitting title for a conference, it's Awaken Us. Awaken us. Church, are you watching your television screens? Are you watching what the world is saying? Not the Christians, the world. You see, you don't even have to be saved to understand that something is being unleashed upon the earth right now. There is a darkness that is coming upon the nations of the world. You don't need to be saved to know that there is great wickedness being released upon the earth. But as the church of Jesus Christ, this should not shock you. As the people of God, we've been called to stand in such a time as this. To shine with the light of Christ and his eternal kingdom. Jesus told us in Matthew 24 that we are to discern the signs of the times. Jesus said, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. The end is not yet. You see, church, this is not a time of fear. This is not a time of fear. I hear Christians online and you're stocking up your food and you're ready to hide in a cave. I ain't stocking no food. I'm not hiding in a cave. I'm not troubled. Jesus said, don't be troubled. He said, the end is not yet. The end is not yet. But Jesus said, when you see these signs take place, look up. Don't look at CNN. Don't look at ABC. Don't look around you saying, what is happening? The president doesn't have an answer. Governments don't have the answer. The wisest men on earth don't have the answer. Jesus said, when you see what you're seeing right now, he said, look up. Your redemption draws near. Your redemption draws near. I believe Jesus was saying, wake up, wake up, get your eyes on me, your spiritual eyes. The book of Ephesians says that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you might know what is the hope of his calling. Everybody has an opinion right now. Some, think it's, some people think it's doomsday. I, I'm not a big theologian. I'm just a simple evangelist. But I've got enough discernment to know that what is being unleashed on the earth, God has already ordained it. He's already foretold it. He's preparing a bride. He's preparing a church. He's 
making us ready and I know we want to live comfortable but in the darkest of times when we feel uncomfortable get ready God is about to do something that only he can do in your life the end is not yet but there is an awakening cry from heaven right now wake up those of you that are sleeping let your spirit man be awakened. This is it. What we're standing in right now. You may say evangelist preachers have been telling me this years and years and years. Nothing's happened. But my friend, the Bible says that this is like a woman in labor. In other words, the, the, the incidents, the earthquakes, the famine, the pestilence, the wars and rumors of wars, they're picking up their pace. They're becoming more frequent. The earth is beginning to travail. We know that when the enemies of Israel come and say, we're going to wipe you out, get ready, because the lion of the tribe of Judah is about to roar. I can imagine the great apostles, the great men and women of God, oh, how they would have loved to be in such a time as this. But you see, church, there's an apathy. There's an apathy in America. There's an apathy in the church. Revelations 22 says, and behold, I am coming quickly and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. He's coming quickly. Why don't we hear any more preachers crying out, the king is coming. Jesus is soon to return. Make yourselves ready. He's coming. Second Thessalonians tells us, it says, do not be shaken in mind or troubled, either by your spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ has come. Let no one deceive you by any means. That day will not come unless the great falling away comes first. Jesus said that in these days, lawlessness will abound and the love of many will grow cold. Can you believe we live in such a generation that they call evil good and good evil? That we celebrate perversion? Oh, you're going to be quiet on me right now. That we celebrate perversion? Listen, I, I live in America. This is my country now. I'm crying out to God for God to move again in America. America belongs to God. America belongs to God. God bless America. God bless America. But America, we've lifted up 60 million children. We've lifted them up for abortion. And we've got to cry out to God for God to move in our generation. For God to heal our land. For God to pour out his spirit to bring a unity again. I'm tired of the devil causing havoc. Let me tell you right now, we all bleed the same and we all need the Savior. We all need a healer. We all need a deliverer. We all need healing in our lives. The Bible says that the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. But he who now restrains him will do so until he's taken out of the way. Church, that spirit of antichrist is rising in the nations. But the Bible says that while the spirit of God is here, while the church of Jesus Christ is here, he is being restrained. And until the Holy Spirit is taken out of this earth, that will mean that the devil can't do what he wants to do. Because the church of Jesus Christ shall restrain the devil while we open the door and usher in a multitude of our generation into the kingdom of God. Is there any spirit filled, fire filled? blood bought Christian that says devil you can't have my family you can't have my children you can't have my marriage we're not here just to sing songs 
I'm ready to take some territory for the kingdom of God. It amazes me that Jesus in Matthew 24, he's preparing his people. But then he suddenly in Matthew 25 begins to give a story. And he begins to cry out at midnight. At midnight, the cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go out and meet him. At midnight, they said, what is the sign of your coming? Jesus said, you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. Nation will rise against nation. There will be famine and pestilence, pestilence, COVID in various places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. And Jesus said, because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Young people, you're looking for love? What the world is offering you is corrupt. It's broken. They don't know love. There's one thing that God says he is. The Bible says God is love. Until you know him, you don't know love, baby. You don't know love. At midnight, the cry was heard. Midnight is the darkest hour. You think it can't get any darker? Church, brace yourselves. I don't have time to go into Bible prophecy. I'm going to leave that to the teachers. <laughs> but if you study your Bible, you realize that Ezekiel spoke of Gog and Magog. In other words, Russia and China and, and Iran are going to rise up in the nations of the world. And uh, they're going to say to Israel, we're going to wipe you out. We're going to push you into the sea. The Bible says that the lion of the tribe of Judah shall fight for Israel. He shall step in. You see, I, I'm not being political. I'm just telling you that it's midnight. It's midnight. And I'm trying to prepare the church. Get ready for the cry the cry is coming from heaven you see God is looking for a bride a spotless bride a bride that is looking and waiting for his appearance they're not sleepy they're not lethargic they're saying come Lord Jesus we're ready we're ready we're ready we're ready we're ready are you ready are you ready See, me and my wife, we have these conversations because this stuff will keep me up at night. I'm about to teach you something that changed my life. If this doesn't awaken you, then you need resurrection. But my wife will say, Nathan, I, I just want the Lord to come. I want him to come now. And I know what she's saying, but in my spirit, I'm saying, Lord, come, but just give me some time. Give us a window. Just, just more grace. I know the day and the hour, Lord, the Father has commanded it. But Lord, if there's time, just give us a window of time. Let us preach to one last soul. Let us just re throw out the lifeline to one last soul, one last man, one last woman. The cry was heard, behold, the bridegroom cometh. Jesus didn't tell stories. He gave revelation. He didn't tell us this story to entertain us. Could it be that he was being actually prophetic? Could it be that Jesus was actually declaring when he spoke of the five foolish and the five wise that half of the church would not be ready? Could it be that half of them, their lamps were not trimmed, they had no oil? What was once a burning flame had now become a dim flicker. What was called to illuminate is now just a little burnt out lamp. See my brother, my sister, I feel the tsunami coming. 
I feel the tsunami on the horizon. I see that the greatest war the world has ever seen is at hand. And it's not just army against army. It should be a war in the heavenlies. And the one who is called the lion of the tribe of Judah, faithful and true, he will ride on a white horse. And I'm ready to meet him in the air. Jesus said that there will be those that were not ready. They thought they were ready. They looked like they were ready. But in the moment when Jesus steps in, suddenly they realized there was no flame. They'd actually become a lukewarm bride. Is this too heavy for a Wednesday night? Because I know you've come and you want, you want the fire of God to fill you. But let me tell you right now, the fire of God is not for a tingle. The fire of God will cause you to step and understand that one day you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And everything he told you to do, you're going to answer to him. Uh-oh, I just touched a nerve. Did you know that? Did you know that the Bible says in that day nothing is secret that will not be revealed? Did you know that anything hidden will be known and come to light? Did you know that Jesus says, therefore, take heed how you listen? Beware of those preachers today that just make you feel good. I'm not against the mocha chocolate service. Well, I am a little bit. But listen to me. I become disturbed when I see the depths of darkness that is coming on a generation and I listen for the cry of the church and it doesn't match the need. If your child was about to walk right into the middle of the 429, you wouldn't stand there and say, baby, come here. You would cry out from the top of your lungs. You would start running. You'd throw off everything you've got because you've got to get to that child. Then why is it? That we see the urgency of the hour and we want a little one hour service with a nice little three point sermon. We need a cry to come out of the church that prepares a generation. Is this too heavy for you? Jesus said, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. Revelation 20 says, I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. The earth and sky fled from his presence. I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. Listen to this church. And the books were opened. Now you might not shout and holler at this bit, but I'm going somewhere. Think for a moment in the courts of heaven. Your name will be called. You won't be called as a sinner. When you're washed in the blood of Jesus, your sins are forgotten, but you will be called as a saint. This is not a theology lesson, but there are two thrones, two judgment seats in the Bible. One is called the great white throne. That is for those that resisted and rejected Christ. But the Bible says in Romans that we will stand, all will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. You won't be judged as a sinner, but you will be judged as a son and a daughter of God. Not whether you're saved. What did you do with what I gave you? See, I believe when those books are opened, they will declare what God's will was for your life. It won't matter how famous you were. You can be famous but not walk in the will of God. You can have a big church and not walk in the will of God. 
The only thing that will count is what counts for eternity. Do I have time to preach to you? Are you sure? Is this too heavy for you? 1 Corinthians 3, 9 through 12 tells you exactly what will happen on that day. I'm going to read just a portion of it. It says, for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved. Oh, he's not preaching to the world. It says, he shall be saved, but as though through fire. See, I don't want to enter before the throne of God empty-handed. I want what God has told me to do, to count for eternity. You see, church, we can't sleep. There's something that God has called you to do. There's something he's called you to be. There's a plan and a purpose for your life. There is something that God is revealing in you for his glory. This is not the time to sleep. Somebody give God a mighty shout of praise. I'm preaching to somebody right now that something hits you and it caused you to just step out of what you were doing. You were called. God was using you, but something happened and it shook you. It's time to get back in the race. It's time to get back on track. The time is short. We don't have any time. You got to get in the race and you got to run with fire. If you've got to have a fresh touch, then tonight get to this altar and let the fire of God do a work in your heart because you're called for such a time as this. If you believe Believe it, give God a mighty shout of praise. I don't have much time, but Christian, 1 John 1 says, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. See, I believe the Holy Spirit has brought you here on the first night because there's, there's some work he wants to do in us. There's been some darkness that has tried to take your faith. There's been some darkness that's tried to kill your praise. There's been something or someone that spoke something over your life. But I'm telling you, you came to awake. God's, God's, God says you're about to step out of the darkness and step into the light. You're about to get a touch from heaven. God is about to do something in your life. The Bible says to stir up the gift, to stir up the fire. Proverbs says, where there is no wood, the fire will go out. Sometimes you just got to throw some wood on it. Are you still burning? I want to ask my team and my staff, is the fire still burning in you? This is not a job. It's a heavenly call. You're not employed. If you work for this church, it's not a job. It's a calling. It's an anointing. It's a purpose. Ecclesiastes 3 says that God put eternity in their hearts. Whew. I want eternity to burn in my heart. Because when I stand before him, I don't want to realize in that moment that what he gave me to do, I was blind, I was deaf. I never did what he called me to do with all of my heart. See church, God didn't choose Smith Wigglesworth. He didn't choose Leonard Ravenhill. He didn't choose the greats. He didn't choose Billy Graham for now. Guess what? I don't know why, but talk to God about it. He chose you. 
He chose me. He chose us. We are the ones that are going to stand right in the back courts of the devil. Right in his backyard. We're going to stand as the light of Jesus. So that a generation will know that Jesus is the only way. He is the only truth. He is the only way to the Father. I got to finish. I got to finish. See my friend. I'm not troubled because I'm on the winner's side. I'm serious. I'm not troubled. I've got peace. Do you know right now, we have a representative right now as we're talking. Because of what God is doing in Nicaragua, the government in Cuba are now talking about us coming and doing the same thing in Cuba. I'm not afraid because I know God has got my back. See, my friend, whatever you need, the Word of God is the answer. In the Gospel of Matthew, He is the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Eternal King. In the Gospel of Mark, He's the Miracle Worker, the Healer, the Deliverer, the Baptizer. In the Gospel of Luke, He is the Sinless Son of Man, and He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In the Gospel of John, He's the Bread of Life, He's the Lamb of God, He's the Savior of the world and yes he is the coming king that's why in the book of Peter we're not born of a corruptible seed but through the word of God we are the seed of Christ and that means you have resurrection life flowing through you I'm trying to tell somebody right now it might look dead it might look like it's over but you better get ready because resurrection power is about to flow in this place We're baptized in the Holy Ghost in the book of Acts. We're brought near through the blood of Jesus in the book of Romans. We're crucified with Christ in Galatians. We're seated in heavenly places with Christ in Ephesians. We're strengthened by Christ in Philippians. We're hidden in Christ in Colossians. And in the book of Revelation, we rule and reign with Christ for all of eternity. You ought to praise him right there. We're on the winner's side. Greater is he that lives in us than he that is in the world. So my friend, you can't sleep. You got to get the sin out. See, my friend, Philippians says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Two pieces of wood, one vertical, one horizontal, by which the Lamb of God died for the sins of the world. That symbol has become the foundation of all the church is built upon. The cross of Calvary. The blood of Jesus. See my friend, the cross is both horizontal but vertical as well. We're called to minister to him, but also to reach a lost and dying world. It's vertical, but it's also horizontal. You got to touch God in order to touch a generation. Now I'm going to shock some people, but it's not about your lights or your smoke machines. I got news for you. The world does it better. Your media screens don't impress. And listen, I'm not against it. We have it all, but I'm not against it. I'm trying to tell you that we need more. We need heaven to come down. We need his glory to touch us so that we can reach a lost and dying generation. Begin to play, my brother. It's both redemption and relationship, covenant and consecration. It's salvation and sonship, holiness and humility, kingdom and dominion, righteousness and justice, truth and grace, prayer and supplication, faith and perseverance, justification and service. It's the anointing and the mission, God and his church, Jesus Christ and his spotless bride. See, my brother, my sister, we're not warring against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in heavenly places. You see, those same spirits are still trying to steal a generation. That spirit of Antichrist seeks to destroy. But there stands the church of Jesus Christ. 
For every Pharaoh, God will raise a Moses. For every Goliath, God will raise a David. For every Jezebel, God will birth an Elijah. For every Herod, God through the power of his son Jesus Christ has anointed the church of Jesus Christ to say to every devil, every principality, we bind you in Jesus' name. Let this generation go. My friend, you might be here tonight and there's sin in your life, but you can still rise. You may be broken, but you can still rise. You may be addicted, depressed, oppressed, but you can still rise. You may be betrayed. You may feel misunderstood. You may be lonely. You may be confused, but you can still rise. You may be grieving. You may be angry. You may be broken, but you can still rise. See, my brother, my sister, it's time for you to rise. It's time for you to rise and take your place. It's time for you to step into all that God has for your life. The time is short. Get rid of that apathy in your life. See, when you know who you are in Christ, silence is not an option. <laughs> We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. We have leading voices of science and universities telling our generation there is no God. Silence is not an option. Sexual perversion is rampant. God is mocked on our national media networks. Silence is not an option. Violence on our streets, sex trafficking, stealing a generation. Where are the preachers? But in this hour, the people that know their God shall be strong. And the Bible says they will carry out great exploits. See, my brother, my sister, it's time to rise up. And I believe that in these next months and years, we will see the greatest move of God. Your family will see a move of God. Your ministry will see a move of God. Are you ready? See, right now, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. Young people, look at me right now. You might think I'm crazy, but I know God's speaking to you right now. Are you on fire for Jesus? I know you might sing songs, but what about in the secret places of your life? See, tonight the blood of Jesus is here right now. He wants to wash you and cleanse you, and then He wants to set you ablaze. He wants you to be a burning one. He wants you to be bold as a lion. He wants you to walk in your destiny and your purpose. So right now all over this room, whether you're six or 106, are you ready? You may say evangelist. My heart has grown cold. See, there are times in my life that it feels like the pressures of life cause that flame to just dim. But there are times when I say, God, I can't do it by myself. I get on my knees. I say, God, set me ablaze that I may burn for you. And he's never let me down. His blood tonight can wash you whiter than snow. Forgive us of every sin. And that same blood will usher you in to the very glory of His presence. See, on this first night, I want to ask you, are you awake? Are you awake? Is your heart burning? I want everyone to stand to your feet all over this room right now. I believe mighty miracles are going to happen tonight. I believe the fire of God is going to burn in this place. 
But right now, if you're here tonight and you say evangelist, I know I love Jesus, but I've grown cold. You may be here tonight and there's an issue in your life. There's sin in your life. Then right now, you don't have to wait. You can get out of your row, get out of your seat. And I want you to come and stand at this altar right now. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with every one of you. Because tonight, the Holy Spirit is about to awaken your heart. If you know that's you, come right now. Run right now. Run right now. Run right now. Quickly get out of your row. Get out of your seat. Run right now. Run right now. Quickly. 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 Right now. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Run. Get out of your room. Get out of your seat. Come right now. We're ready. We're ready. Get out of your room. Get out of your seat. Come on right now. Quickly, 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 quickly. Come on right now. Those of you that are watching around the world right now.
for those of you that have given your life to Christ but maybe your heart has grown cold maybe your back slid up maybe there's a secret sin I want you to know right now all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God but God says if you repent if you turn away from that sin I'll wash you whiter than snow so whether this is your first time or your hundredth time Jesus is waiting for you right now and I'm not going to pray this prayer for you I want you to pray it you have to pray it it's your prayer but I'm going to lead you but I want you to say it out loud with all of your heart say this with me say Lord Jesus I come to you tonight a sinner and I ask wash me in your precious blood forgive me of my sin forgive me of every apathy set my heart on fire Lord tonight I am forgiven I am a child of God I turn away from this world Jesus make me ready set my heart on fire use my life for your glory in Jesus name every curse is broken over my life over my family I belong to Jesus and he belongs to me if you believe that I want you to give God a radical shout of praise right now
with me say God has not given me a spirit of fear but that of a sound mind Lord I break every fear from her life and I speak boldness 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 upon her There it is. Fire. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. Father, he's your heavenly father, and you are his son. You are loved. You're loved. That's who you are. <laughs> your heavenly father, your heavenly father knows you. He told me to say you are loved. I don't know why you want to hear that, but that's what you need to hear right now. You're loved. That's your identity. That's who you are. Bring this pastor to me. 
His wife, bring them to me. There's a mighty anointing here right now. If you have cancer in your body, come to me quickly. Come to me on this side quickly right now. If there's cancer, somebody, even on your skin, come to me right now quickly. If there's cancer in your body, come to me quickly right now. Father, I thank you for this precious couple. When I, when I looked at you tonight, I was preaching and I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, I want you to confirm everything that I've given him, everything, every dream that I have birthed in him. Tell him it will come to pass. Do not despise small beginnings. God said, I'm making your root strong and deep for you have been faithful to teach but there will come a time when that root will begin to break ground at a rate that will be so supernatural quickly it will come quickly it will come Father, as Jesus cursed the fig tree, I curse every cell of cancer in Jesus' name. No! Now, shrivel up! Yes. Now! your hands the glory of God is here right now come here young man what is your name Chris Chris how old are you 12 12 you love Jesus yes Chris I want you to lift your hands like this lift them both high you're 12 is that right 12 years old when I was about your age one night a preacher came to my daddy's church I'd never seen him before and I looked at him I thought he's strange but whenever he preached I was sat at the back of the church and I would feel like a wind blowing around me I, I, I thought, as somebody opened the window, the glory of God would just flow through the room. At the end of the service, I ran up to the preacher and I looked at the preacher and I said, Preacher, how, how does this happen? And he looked at me, he got down on one knee and he looked me in the eye and he said, Son, God will use you, but it will take sacrifice. Chris, God will use you, but it will take sacrifice. God is going to touch you even now. 12 years old. He's already anointing you. Nobody touch him. Nobody touch him. Lord, as that man laid his hand on me, I lay my hand upon this young boy. Use him. Let your fire fall on him. Close your eyes, close your eyes. Now. There it is. 
Nobody touch him. Father, let that mantle come upon him. I feel the Lord is here right now. Lord, make us ready. Make us ready. Are you ready to run with fire, church? I said, are you ready to run with fire? Join your hands all over this room right now. There's a mighty anointing here right now. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Father, I pray right now that you would anoint them afresh. A fresh fire, a fresh anointing, fresh vision, a fresh voice. Let faith arise in our hearts. There's glory here right now. Fire. Every hand joined. Holy Spirit move across this auditorium awaken our heart when I count to three I want you to shout the name of Jesus when you do the power of God will go through you you will leave this place with a fresh anointing I'm not playing when I count to three just shout the name Jesus shout it with all your might and as you do the power of God will fall on you one two three shout his name
Let's give a, a really wonderful expression of praise for this ministry tonight. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand up. Let's just lift our hands just before we go. Now, Father, I pray that as we leave this meeting tonight, help us to talk to someone tomorrow about Jesus. I pray, God, that as we get in our cars, that we will sense your presence and your power. Lord, I thank you for such a blessed people. We ask, Lord, now for your glory to go with us as we leave. We ask in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, doors open at 6. Amen. Hug somebody. Love you. Love you. Let's thank our worship team tonight. Before you go, worship team, musicians. Hug someone. Guests, fill out a, a card if you would.